Okay, so sensitivity analysis is a what-if technique that asks what result will be if a predicted amount is not achieved or if an underlying assumption changes. For example, what if demand for tortilla chips is more or less than expected? What if shipping costs increase or decrease due to increases or decreases in gasoline prices? What if the cost of corn flour increases or decreases or union workers negotiate a wage increase? What if sales are 15% cash and 85% credit instead of 20% cash and 80% credit? On the other hand, what if sales are greater than expected? Management must be prepared to meet the additional man for its product or customers may turn to competing suppliers. Technology makes it cost effective to perform comprehensive sensitivity analysis. And most companies use computer spreadsheet programs or special budgeting software to prepare the master budget and all of its components. Managers then will perform sensitivity analysis by simply changing one or several of the underlying assumptions in the budget, such as sales quantity, direct materials costs, and collection items. Now, budgets reflect and communicate management's goals and objectives, and managers leading their companies towards more sustainable practices will want to reflect those goals in the company's budget. For example, Campbell's Soup Company has set long-term environmental goals for 2020, which include cutting water use and greenhouse gas emissions per ton of food by 6%, reducing packaging materials used by 73%, recycling 80% of the waste generated. The adoption of these long-term goals will affect most, if not all, of the company's shorter-term budgets. For example, the operating expense budget should reflect additional resources devoted to researching and developing more sustainable packaging materials. Recall that budgets also serve as benchmarks for judging performance. By developing strategic environmental goals that span several years and then tracking yearly performance, Campbell can see how well it is working towards achieving those long-term goals. Now, um, recall that service companies have no merchandise inventory, so their operating budgets are only going to include the sales budget, operating budget, and the budgeted income statement. The financial budgets are all those the same as would appear for a manufacturer. Now, um, the biggest issue for service companies will be coordinating professional staff with anticipated needs, so making sure that we're not over or understaffed. The, either of those can cause significant problems. So that's something that service companies want to look out for. Now because merchandising companies purchase ready-made products, they don't need to prepare production, direct materials, direct labor, or manufacturing overhead budgets. So replacing these budgets is a combination of cost of goods sold, inventory, and purchases budget. The cost of goods sold, inventory, and purchases budget follows the same general format as the manufacturer's production budget except that it's calculated at cost in dollars instead of in units. Notice that the format of the budget is easy to remember because it call, follows the same name of the budget. We start with cost of goods sold and then consider inventory levels and finally arrive at the amount of purchases to be made. Let's say one Circle J convenience store expects sales of 500,000 in January, 520,000 in February, 530,000 in March, and 550,000 in April. Let's also assume that management sets its prices to achieve a 40% gross profit. As a result, cost of goods sold then will be 60% of the sales revenue. Finally, management wishes to have ending inventory equal to 10% of the next month's cost of goods sold. Keep in mind that all figures are shown at cost. So figures from this budget are then used as follows. Cost of goods sold is used in preparing the budgeted income statement. Ending inventory is used in preparing the budgeted balance sheet and then purchases of inventory are used in preparing the cash payments budget. Also, let's talk real quickly about the impact of debit and credit card sales on budgeting. So consumers often use credit and debit cards to pay for their online and in-store purchases at retailers, gas stations, and restaurants. So what implications do these payment methods have on the merchants that accept plastic in place of cash or check? Credit card companies and their issuing banks charge the merchant a transaction fee for each purchase made using plastic. The fee is usually a fixed amount plus a percentage of the amount charged. In exchange for the fee, the credit card company and its issuing bank pays the merchant the entire amount of the purchase less the transaction fee. A deposit is made to the merchant's bank within a few days of sale. Now, debit card transactions usually have lower fees than credit card transactions. 
This is because debit card purchases require an associated PIN, so the risk of fraud is lower than with a credit card. Also, debit card sales are paid to the merchant using money that's in the customer's bank account rather than money that's in essence loaned to the customer by the credit card company. Because the cash used for the deposit is not subject to credit card risk, it's made with cheaper funds. Now, beginning on October 1st, 2011, the Federal Reserve set a cap on the debit card transaction fees that banks can charge mer merchants. So, in anticipation of this credit card sale would be shown in the budget as follows. So, 50, a $50 sale would be shown in the sales budget in the month of sale. The $1.25 transaction fee would be shown in the operating expense budget in the month of sale. And the $48.75 would be shown as a cash receipt on the cash collections budget in the month of collection, which is usually one to seven days after the actual sale. Many retailers such as Target, Kohl's, and Old Navy issue their own credit cards in addition to accepting credit cards such as Visa and MasterCard. When a customer uses store-based credit cards, no transaction fee is incurred. However, the risk of collection falls back on the merchant rather than on a third-party credit card company. The merchant must wait for the customer to make payments on the credit card bill. The cash collection may occur over several months, several years, or never. The cash collections budget will take into account the aging of these receivables. Likewise, the operating expense budget will need to take into consideration possible bad debts. Finally, the company will need to budget for interest income assessed on unpaid balances and any fees charged to the customer for late payments. Also, I did want to mention that there is something else called a capital expenditure budget, which shows um, the company's plans to invest in new property, plant, and equipment. Um, the capital expenditures budget specifies the time frame for making those investments. So you can see, uh, we'll look more into this later on, but uh, the company plans to make these particular purchases in January. So total capital investments of 125000 That is certainly something you would want to take into account when preparing your other budgets.